since the last episode. I took a big thing that was coloured red and bolted some slightly smaller red things to it. Then I put some even smaller things inside the small red things that were attached to the big red thing. And then I added some windows. Then I put a big silver thing with fans on it inside the big red thing. After attaching a big black thing to the big red thing, I put some other things in the big red thing where a big black thing is going to go. Then I put some eyes on the big red thing and covered them with a medium sized black thing. And now the big red thing has lots of things attached to it and it looks a bit like a car now. So now I can do a few small things and put the big red thing on top of this big black thing. You are now up to date with things that have happened in the last episode. There will be no foolish wand waving or silly incantations the hell, in this Snake. class. Mr. Beck may be gone. Our new celebrity. How about a Please! Clearly, fame isn't everything. Today is the day the body finally goes back on the chassis. Permanently. In the background, I've been gradually unpicking all the wiring that's somewhere in this engine bay. And there's a lot of it. I also installed a brake lever. I then made the first thing actually functional on this car. Now to help me in my travels, I've made sure that I've labelled absolutely everything. But the sad thing is, some of these things, I didn't know what they were. So for example, this one is labelled banana. And there's one over there on the fuse box that's named parsnip. But all of the other ones on these not so greasy dreadlocks are labelled what they are and where they need to go. But as it stands now, the wiring looks like it's ready to survive the zombie apocalypse. Now before anything, there are some things to address around this area. If you would like to win this phenomenal piece of artwork, comment, I'm sorry Snape, in the comments, and I will choose one at random. And you have to share the video as well, because that's what people on YouTube say and do. And you can win this one-of-a-kind piece of very valuable art. Anyway, moving on. All that's left to do in here is undo a couple of fastenings that are holding this entire wiring loom in place, and pull out the dash. And I'm hoping it's like all these modern, fancy ones where it's all held in by clips and I'll just be able to rip it apart with Neanderthal strength. But as we all know, with Volkswagens, hopes are never reality. So no doubt I'm going to need some annoyingly weird little special tools to take out one bolt in the dash that holds everything together. But that's a job for slightly future me. Anyway, now for some nostalgic shuffling, because I'm really good at editing. off this car and throw them directly into this car. Until I get bored and then I'll put this on top of that because to be honest I'm fed up of all these cars taking up so much space so I may as well stack them so I can use my hoist again. Now I know a lot of people hate on European cars because they say they have shit wiring and stuff but if you compare this to whatever came off the patrol I mean everything's in conduit it's all using waterproof sealed plugs then along comes Nissan. Sure, it's 30 years old, and there's a little bit of it in conduit, but the majority of it is just in tape like that. And all the connectors, none of them are really waterproof. So I think it's safe to say Euro wiring is a lot better than 30-year-old Japanese wiring. Do what you want with that information.
Now Volkswagen, why would you insist on putting clips that you have to use with your hands in a place where many, many spiders are going to live? Now I've got to be brave. Now I know this is wishful thinking, but there's a lot of wires here that I have to feed back through once I take the dash out. And what I would love is for there to, underneath this weird little rubber thing, for there to be a nice little connector so I can disconnect it. So let's find out live. There is no connector. We could have had a good thing, Volkswagen, but you ruined it. Now to avoid the risk of sounding like I'm gnawing on myself, this looks pretty good. All I've done is literally put a second battery tray in there and it's almost like that fuse box wants to line up perfectly. And all this wiring goes across where it did in the Toreg, back around there where I'll have that protrusion going into the cabin. And all that's left of this part of the loom are all the air intake and gubbins there. Now obviously, we're nowhere near finished. There are many other things to go in this engine bay, all of which seem to mysteriously fit better than you'd expect. It needs to be cleaned. If you're observant, you might have noticed something less than ideal. These things. And in the perfect world, I would not be using these, but I'm hoping they're going to be temporary. I'd like to think that it's going to give me a little bit of extra room to work on it while it's back together. And then I'll be able to take them out and the world will be a better place again. But chances are, because of the dimensions of this thing, they're going to be permanent. But we'll see. It is time. Anyway, that's now up in the air, and I'm extremely sweaty and a little bit scared. So under here, I've done the Raptor color matched shit. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it's done now anyway. And I've also added from the Toreg for the heat shields that go on the firewall. So that's probably easier to do while the engine's out. And aside from that, it's ready to plop on board. The only thing I'm a bit worried about is now that I've taken the rotisserie out, I bet these are gonna get in the way of the chassis, but I won't know till I try. So let's try.
that's a V10 patrol in the air. So I'm gonna dive under here and have a look and see if everything's all okay because short wheelbases on hoists are scary things and I don't wanna be under here for too long. Because you can only really lift them with the arms really close together, which means that they're pretty rickety and rubbish. Anyway, those mounts are touching. Needs a bit of alignment, but I'll put the bolt in after because that's the only one that screws in from beneath. All the other ones go in from the top and it's really easy to align them. That one looks all right. Same on the other side. And the front ones as well. And the last ones are here. Those are the ones that I had to put the weights on top of to keep the front of the body down. And they look pretty well aligned. Same as that one, it needs a little bit of a tweak, but it'll do. So if there's only one way I can describe this, Anyway, let's look at the important bit. And there it is in all its dusty glory. Obviously I didn't hose down the engine because it's full of holes and things that'll fill up with water that shouldn't fill up with water. But that's a tandem pump. Anyone who has a V10 Toreg, you're jealous of this right now. And then I had a few idiots on Patrol Hub bullying me for bashing up my body and saying it looked shit. But that's the reason why. It's basically contoured around these pipes here. But, as you can see, if I want to change my turbos, I can touch the bolts right there. And this one's the same sort of situation for the steering box. I've got a clear shot there from that spline shaft right up to the bit where the steering column goes through. And apart from that, the wiring in the engine bay almost looks like it lives there. I had this uh, second battery holder sitting on the shelf for like a year, and I thought, oh, that looks a similar shape. Turns out it is. Time for some obligatory fancy pants shots. Now surely, that's worth a subscribe. Because in the next episode, I'm gonna try and start it. Maybe, if I can do enough electric stuff. That means it's probably not gonna start in the next episode, but I'm gonna do some electric stuff. And then I'll probably turn the key in the episode after that. That's all, bye.